Hi everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial. Uh, this week we're looking at Twine. So Twine is a great tool for telling interactive stories, interactive games. Um, it's going to feel quite similar to the way we were making games in the last couple of weeks uh, with Bitsy, and then kind of what we were thinking about before with the, the pen and paper rules as well. Again, the main thing to think about with this episode is about the storytelling and the ways that we're able to tell stories through games. Because you might have noticed this already, you might have thought about this, but one of the ways that games are kind of different to other media is the way that they offer a chance for this interaction. And in a game, you can often kind of choose your path and make decisions that affect the story in a way that just isn't possible with, uh, say, like movies or TV shows or books. So in this way, the stories are kind of shaped or controlled by player actions. Now, what this means is that if you're making a game, you have to begin to think about the different ways that a player can move through them. So you're not just thinking about a single uh, storyline anymore. You have to think about the different paths that a player can take to get through them. And this is why Twine is a really interesting tool, because it allows you to think about that really easily and clearly. Twine is also a tool that people will use making professional games. They might not um, end up publishing the game in Twine, but they will use Twine like we're going to use it to map out the story. So to use Twine, you have to go to the website, twinery.org. You can either download it or you can use it in the browser. If you can download it, that's probably a better option. Um, but for now, we'll just use it online. So when you open up Twine, you should have a space that looks a bit like this, except you'll probably start with no stories. And all you have to do to get started is add story. So as an example, um, what we're going to do is recreate the game that we made in Bitsy that was uh, set in a garden. So if you haven't seen it, if you haven't watched that episode, it's a, we set up a space where the player was some kind of gardener, they were moving through several spaces in a garden, and you had to find a key to get back out of the garden. Okay, so let's just go through a bit of what's in the window here. So we have our passage here. This is what the pieces of the game are built out of. I'm going to see a lot of those in a moment. Down here you can adjust how those are viewed. And then you've got the options to test it, to play the story, and also to create a new passage. So I click that, and instantly there's another one there. Now I'm just going to delete that one. Okay, and down in this corner, we've got a few options as well. You can go back to the main menu. Or we can open up this tab here, and we can edit a few different things. These are a bit more advanced, um, so don't worry about them for the moment. But this is how you kind of add in more complex things with the way the player interacts with the story, with the JavaScript, or particularly the way the story looks when a player views it in the style sheet. We can also rename the story here. We can reorganize the passages, and it's also where we find the options to download our story, publish it to file or view a proof and copy. That one is like a, a list of the text that makes up the story. Okay, so let's double click on this passage to open it. So this is the way all the basic passages open up. If we delete that text there, it's really useful to remember that this will appear. Now this is like a helpful hint of, um, basically all we're gonna go through today actually of how you put the passages, passages together. So the rest of this video, we're going to quickly go through recreating the garden text. So you can use it to follow along to get used to how we build the links between the passages and kind of what things we're checking for as we go through. But at any time, feel free to kind of uh, drop off and start building your own things. With Twine especially, it's quite good um, to just open it up and start building. So we're going to Call this piece, first piece at the beginning. I 
often with Twine stories um, and interactive fiction in general, we have this perspective where the text is talking directly to the player. So it says things like, you wake up, you must win asleep sometime. And the player is kind of put into this first person perspective where they're making decisions about what they want to happen. So we'll maybe come back to this in a little bit. But for now, I just wanted to create a section that was the opening text for the game. So setting the scene a bit, the player's just waking up. And then uh, we're going to say, get up. So what we've done here is created a link. We've created a link by using these square brackets. So we have two square brackets on either side of the link. The text here, get up, that's what I want to appear to the player. Then we have this arrow made out of the hyphen and then the, the bracket there. Northwest Garden, this is the passage that I want that text to link to. Now at the moment, this is the only passage in our game. But having written this, once I close this, it's going to create a new passage for us. So let's see that. So now we have this arrow showing that this passage here is linked to this new one. So again, we can open up this new passage and we can begin to edit it. So one way of thinking about making a Twine game that can be quite useful at the beginning is to think of passages as encompassing different rooms or different spaces. So the way we're going to build our um, game today is we're going to give a bit of a description about the room and then some options of how the player can interact with that. Um, and obviously our room is just a part of the garden. So we're just creating some simple text. Um, again, I think this is going to be something we're going to come back to. So there is a gate here, but it appears to be locked. Um, if you remember in the Bitsy game, this was the main thing. We have this, this gate um, and the player can't get to it. Then maybe we should add in a bit more text here to emphasize to the player that they should be finding the key. So we have a bit of description text, and then we're giving the player kind of the options of what they can do next. So from here, you can move to the northeast section of the garden. And we'll make this bit the link that they have to click. So northeast section of the garden. And we're going to call that bit northeast garden. So this is the text they'll click and it's linking to this passage, Northeast Garden, that's going to be created when we close this. And then we have it. And then a really nice thing about Twine is that we can move it around so it's visually making sense to us. So let's go through again. Oops. So there, I was creating a link to the same passage because I forgot to change this bit to southeast. Okay. And I'm going to quickly go through and map out the final two parts. So all the time we're just building up links using the square brackets.
Okay, so let's see how this looks. So we clicked on text. <clears throat> and now we can see the text is just presented to us like this. So you wake up. So we know that was our first passage. And now we're getting the other sections. So from here you can move to the northeast section we got. We click that and we're in the northeast section. And we can move back to the northwest. We can move to the southeast. And we can get right to the southwest. The fox. So you can see we quickly have this space that the player is moving around. Now in the bit C, we had a situation where the player moved through to this final section and they worked their way back through some, like a, a narrow space, um, back to the northeast garden where there was a key. But we're going to do this a slightly different way with this one. We're going to open up this one. So we're going to create this bit of text here that you can also see a small gap in the hedge towards the centre of the garden. And this small gap is going to be like secret one. And you can see we've got this space here. And now here this is where we're going to give our player the key. But maybe we'll make it a bit more interesting than that. Again, we're just adding in some text, making it interesting, and for there's a small wooden box. And we'll make this the only option for now. So here we're creating a situation where the player's gone through this special place. Um, they found this box, they've opened it, and we're saying that they're going to, they've found the key to the garden gate. And now from here, I think we probably want them to go straight back to the southwest section of the garden. So we're just going to create some text that says, get out of here. And now we need to think about making the key actually work as a key because it's fine making it as a story, but that's not going to, that's fine for the player to read it, but it's not telling the computer what to do with it. So what we can do is as soon as this player gets to this point and they've opened the box, we can say, Set dollar sign key is one. Oops. And this is creating a variable, the key, and we're setting it to the value one. Now this gives us something that we can use later in the game. We can we can check against this. So we can see we have this path where if the player goes this way, they can go to there, and then they will go back to there. Now this is going to give us a problem because if the player comes back to here after getting the key, it's not really going to make sense. So what we need to do is create a different condition for this when the player has already found the key. So the simplest way to do this for now might be to check if the player has the key. So we say if key 
is greater than zero, say the same gap in the hedge. From here, you can move to the south section of the garden. So we'll set that text as what's said if the player has the key, which we'll know because the key is not set to zero. And then we just need to make sure that this is what's going to happen if the player um, doesn't have the key. So let's test if that's working. So we've got the rocket symbol up here, which is where the game starts. We don't need to start right over there, so let's just start the story here. Okay, so we need to go to the southwest. Okay, so this looks right. We have our first text, uh, we have the gap. Box. Pick up the box and open it. The side is the key. And we can see down here. This is our kind of debugging code. It's keeping track of how many variables and uh, other things being stored. So we can see the key has been set to one now. So let's say get out of here. And now our text here is correct. The gap in the edge seems to be closed. So we can't move there anymore. And our only option is to move back to the southeast section of the garden. So that one seems to be working. Um, as you might have started to notice, one of the great things about Twine is how it's really nice. Like we were adding in detail with the Bitsy with the different textures, and with the last session with the, the pen and paper, you might have been adding in kind of bits of storyline to make the rules make sense. Um, here you can add in more details to make the story interesting so quickly. Let's add in something for the fox. So I decided it might be interesting for the player to click on the fox. Okay, so we just added a small bit of detail. It's another option for the player to click on. And the nice thing is it's not crucial that they click on it. It's not necessary that they, they do that to complete the game, but it just adds in some detail and something for them to engage with if they want to. So now we have the player that has the key, but they don't have any way to use the key. So let's go back to our first bit here. And we said there is a gate here, but it appears to be locked. So this section is where we're going to build in the check for the key. So like we did before, we're going to say if if the key is this one Okay, so this section here is where the text is going to be different depending on whether or not the player has a key. Everything in the side of this, um, the player will see regardless. So the first one we're keeping the same, and the second one, when they have the key, we're going to say, we're going to suggest they try and use it. 
and that's created another section here. So this is the gate. In fact, we're going to rename that to exit. Now, as I did that, it's <clears throat> created a new one. Um, actually, it's not one. Let's call it ending. Okay. Let's see. You go to the gate. The key works. You're free to go home. And just like the end. So, in theory, we now have a full game. We can see the arrows work. You can see if it gets to there, bring it to there. Go around here to get the key, and they can move back. Let's test if it works. So we can see we've got the key now. Now we have our garden, uh, our gate text. You find the key to the gate, Let's see if it works. You go to the gate, key works, you need to go in. And that's it, there's no more options there. So that is very, very quickly how you, how you can build a, a basic game. Um, one other trick we wanted to show you was at the beginning here, you can get um, user input as well. So we're going to do set cat name. Prompt, what is your name? And then we need this bit here just to create a little space. And where are we going to use that? Let's look down here, Southeast Garden, there's the cat. And the cat. Cat. So now we're saying the cat. Our cat name is here too. Hopefully, when we get there. The cat will have the name. We'll set. What's your name? Oh, yes. And the cat Matthias is here too. So, as we've just shown, using variables is a nice way of creating more interest. Um, but. What I really like to do is once you've got some basic text, is just go in and start adding in these details. You can use this to really build up um, the story and the space and the feeling of the space. Okay, so hopefully that's been useful. We'll, um, Share some links, some more tutorials, and kind of places you can look online for about how to build in Twine. Um, it'd be great if you want to try and create something following on from this. Um, maybe try and, like we've done here, recreate whatever you built in Bitsy or kind of a work, game you were working on last week, and just have a play around. I'd say if you have a, an idea of a story that you want to create, start mapping it out. If you're not so sure, maybe start with one passage, just start describing a place, maybe the room that you're in, and kind of finding these bits where you can you can create links and draw other details out of it. The player doesn't have to be doing something like finding a key to get out of a gate. It can be more interesting to just look through details of a space and kind of use Twine as a way of a player guiding their own route through exploring a space. Remember to send in anything you create. We've got the form kind of link next to this video and it'd be great to see what you're working on and we'll see you next time.